2020. He moved all 2021 and he is still moving. Come on. I just want to help somebody to know that today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless your name, oh God. Come on, people of God. Let's bless God together. He has been faithful. He is a good God. Mighty are the works of his hand. Oh, Lord. I love the Lord. He is good. He is a good God. Thank you, Lord. 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 Lord. I just believe we're going to see miracles. We're going to see miracles, my God, that we have never seen before. Eyes haven't seen, ears haven't seen, God haven't heard miracles. I believe that we're going to see some things this year. Ooh, glory. I don't know if y'all saw the video. It was on TikTok and I shared it on my Facebook page. It was a video of some fish that was raining from the sky. Come on in the room because the Lord just wants us to know that he is going to provide. You don't have to take the mark of the beast. You don't got to bow down to the beast system. You ain't got to worry about your provision for the Lord. Our God is a strong tower. Come on. It was fish raining from the sky. They said they didn't know what was going on. Ooh, the news channel, they tried to make sense of it, y'all. They tried. They was like, well, you know, it's just when, you know, when fish get caught up in the life cycle of water and then somehow, child, you can't make no sense of this because it's supernatural. But it's a sign. The same way he allowed manna to rain down from the sky, he's God. He is God. We just don't believe like we need to believe. But if we ever just fool around and believe God. Yay, glory. If we ever just fool around and believe God. I love the Lord. He's a good God, y'all. I love the Lord. He's a good God. And mighty are the works of his hand. Yay, glory. I want you to be encouraged on today. I want you to be encouraged on today. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're facing, no matter what what it looks like, no matter what it sounds like, God is still God. We just hit 2021 and 2022, the year of double favor. So it doesn't matter. See, I remember I was at a church and I can't remember what the decree was over the over the uh, house that year. But it was something good. It was something prosperous. And this was in 2020. And then when when COVID hit, everybody just fell apart. Wait a minute. Do we not believe the report of the Lord? It does not matter if a famine is in the land. If the Lord said double favor, you don't have to fall apart at the appearance of problems because he is God. Come on. He is Adonai. He is El- uh, Elohim. He is Emmanuel. He is God with us. I don't know. Listen, we got to learn how to hold it together in the appearance of problems because 
cause if God be for me, come on, he, 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 he is greater than the world against us. I need us to know that. So I just got my Bible open this morning. I just opened it up and this scripture just blessed me. So I'm going to bless you with it. And then we're going to hop in because we are continuing to talk about Jezebel this morning. It has been a blessing to so many people. And we're going to pick right up in that same vein. Uh, but I turn to Proverbs. Proverbs 8 and 35 says, whoever, for whoever finds me, whoever finds me finds life and receives favor from the Lord. Whoever misses me injures themselves and all who hate me love death. And so I want to encourage on somebody on today because many times we're struggling and we're you, you having to walk away from people and that just is what it is. It's a part of life. You're having to grow. You're not even having to walk away. You're having to grow past people. But the word of the Lord is whoever finds me finds life and receives favor from the Lord. But whoever misses me injures themselves and all who hate me love death. And so you ain't got to worry uh, about nothing that's going on, who comes, who goes, but the Lord is going to make sure that you have everything that you need in this season, for he is the good father. He is the good father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love God and all his children. Let's hop on in our word today. Lord, we thank you on today. We thank you, Lord, for your word is true. And your word is life to us. Your word is strength. Your word is health. We thank you for your word. We thank you that you're still speaking. We thank you that you're still loving on us. We thank you that you're still moving. We thank you that you're still proving. We thank you that you're still showing up. You're still answering prayers. You're still delivering. You're still saving. My God, we thank you that your word promises us. Hey, glory. I need you to know there's a promise over your head. I thank you that your word promises us that no weapon formed against us shall prosper and that it has to actually work together for our good. So every broken thing, everything that we don't like, everything that doesn't look good, help us to look at it and find the lesson and find the blessing. My God, we thank you, Lord, that you are a good God, merciful, kind. You're all knowing. You are all seeing, omnipotent. You are omnipresent. We thank you that you are still the great healer. You are still the great deliverer. We thank you that mighty are the works of your hand. We thank you, God. Hey, glory that you have never failed us. You have never failed us once, my God. And we thank you that you don't plan on starting now. You are the undefeated champion. You have never lost a fight. Hey, glory. We thank you that victory belongs to you, my God. We thank you that it is in you that we live. It is in you that we move. It is in you that we have our being. We thank you that you are still God. Hey, glory. Hallelujah. We thank you that you shall supply all of our needs according to your treasure chest. We thank you. We bless your name. We call you holy. We call you righteous. We come this morning asking for forgiveness of our sins of omission and our sins of commission. We thank you, Lord. We ask that you keep us under the blood. Keep our mind today, God, for your word promises us that you would keep us in perfect peace. No matter what comes, no matter what goes, no matter what it looks like, no matter what this week has in store for us, you promised us, God, I bless your name, that you would keep us in perfect peace if we keep our minds stayed on you. Help us to stay fixed and focused, my God. Help us to think on the things that are lovely, the things that are above. Help us to look beyond our circumstances, God, I bless your name. Help us to pray for our enemies, my God. Thank you, Lord, because Jesus said, pray for those that mistreat you and persecute you. He said, forgive them for they know not what they do. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Hey, glory, because they're going to need mercy messing with a child of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your kind. You're kind, God. You're kind. You're kind. You're kind. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. May we forgive or we won't be forgiven. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you for new beginnings in this year. In Jesus' name, hallelujah and amen. Hallelujah. God is faithful, y'all. Oh, glory. All right. Come on in the room. We are continuing our series. We're talking about the Jezebel spirit. Talking about the Jezebel spirit. Did it bless y'all? The teaching that we started last week, I pray that it really encouraged you because I know it was blessing me while I was teaching it, okay? Hey, glory. Good morning, evangelist. Good to see you, woman of God. Hallelujah. 
I just also want to say a special thank you to Evangelist Erica for everything that she does. Listen, I'm not sitting here. I always tell y'all, I don't sit here by myself. I sit here as one woman, but it's a whole lot of people that help behind me. Come on, it's a lot of people that are, uh, that have their hands in the plow helping to continue to bring the makeover ministry to life. And I thank God for all of those people. All right, folks. Uh, give me one second. Glory to God. He's a good God. Y'all just can't get past it. All right. Let's hop in here. So we let's recap a little bit. So we talked about last week Jezebel and Ahab. We talked about how the Jezebel spirit uh, has a, is, is a spirit that has the appearance of godliness, but denies the power to live godly. They deny the power to live holy. Someone who is under the influence of Jezebel, they'll tell you nobody's perfect. They'll make excuses for why they can't. You know, they know all the they know all the scriptures to support sin and not one scripture uh, that knows how to support holiness. And so that is interesting. Um, and so I want us to continue to dive in and understand that Jezebel is marked by sexual sin. Um, Jezebel is marked by uh, pushing and imposing fear upon people. So she has a threat. The spirit is a, we talked about how it is a feminine spirit um, and it uh, is a fear, a spirit who whose agenda is to push fear into the hearts of God's people, uh, to be intimidating. Uh, Jezebel is a rebellious spirit. Um, it's an un. They have an unrepented heart. Their, their heart is cold. They say they know God, but they don't know God. Because if you knew God, you would be living differently. Um, come on. Jezebel has a controlling spirit. Jezebel wants to uh, usurp a third authority. Um, she's hard. That spirit is a hard hearted spirit. And so you can, that's why that, that spirit can, it doesn't care who it hurts. It doesn't care who it manipulates. It's also a manipulative spirit. It doesn't care who it breaks. Come on. But just trust and believe Jezebel, those people that carry that spirit and do not choose to get delivered. Oh, they're going to have their day. <laughs> They are going to have their day. It is the report of the Lord. Uh, Jezebel's spirit is a haughty spirit. It's a proud spirit. Uh, it carries the spirit of murder. And so it may not murder, uh, it may not murder a person physically. But it likes to murder the character of a person. It likes to uh, it likes to murder people emotionally, mentally. It likes to murder people spiritually. And so we have to understand. Um, and so if you have not been on the teachings with us, go back. It's on my YouTube channel. It's called Under the Influence of Jezebel, Part One and Part Two. Um, and so let's. You do, we're doing too much this morning here on TikTok. See, that's just distraction. We're talking about one thing that's so distracting. And it's honestly disrespectful. We're talking about one thing. Let's stay focused. If we're talking about one thing, let's stay on that one thing that we're talking about. Hmm. All right. Let's go to um, First Kings. We're going to pick up where we left off. Let's go to First Kings. And we're going to start at chapter 21. God, I bless your name. And we are going to start where we left off at verse 25. I hope you shared the live with somebody this morning. If you're watching on TikTok, make sure you double tap that screen a couple of times. All right. First Kings 21 and 25 says, no one else so completely sold himself to what was evil in the Lord's sight as Ahab did under the influence of his wife, Jezebel. Hmm. We talked about yesterday, people who provoke, you might want to be careful. Those who provoke people to sin, hmm, you're going to have your day. Because you. some people know the things that they are doing and, and they just keep on doing it. And they like to push people to the brink, but woe to those who are pushing people to the brink. It's not going to be good. 
His worst outrage was worshiping idols just as the Amorites had done. The people whom the Lord had driven out from the land ahead of the Israelites. Okay. So he was full of idolatry. He started worshiping. He started worshiping the God that Jezebel uh, brought on the scene. And so that's what we have to be mindful of people. When the Jezebel spirit comes, it comes to throw you off track. It comes to have you worshiping something else. It, ha it comes to pull you out of church, pull you out of holiness, pull you out of the things of God. It does not come. You have to understand what, when these people come into my life, what are they provoking in, the, in me? Are they provoking worldliness? Are they provoking holiness? Do they make me have to bite my tongue so I don't cuss? them out come on uh are they on the list of the enemies that i gotta pray for but you said that you were holy come on we have to understand what is this person really bringing to my life what is this ministry really bringing into my life we have to look at the full spectrum we talked about this don't be so worried about the results oh they bringing good results good they bringing results but how are they getting there you have to watch the details okay you have to watch the details and you have to watch how they're getting there. You have to watch the character. Do not just listen to the words. Okay. The word of God says in the last days, the most elect will be food. If it were possible, they, they will always, a leper cannot change his spots. Okay. You know, and so you will always know the Lord is going to let you know. He said, I will not let you be ignorant to Satan's devices. So you have to be mindful of those details. And when you realize it's wrong, exit stage left. Don't be afraid to exit stage left people of God. But when Ahab heard this message, he tore his clothing, dressed in burlap and fasted. He even slept in burlap and went about in deep mourning. So the thing about Ahab was, uh, okay, the blessing was he did realize that when he realized he was wrong, there was some remorse in his heart. Come on, there, that was good. There was some repentance in his heart. He realized I have really messed up. Because a child of God. And so because he really was God, he truly knew that when I mess up, okay, now I have to do something different. I have to turn from my wicked ways. All right. And then another message from the Lord came to Elijah. Excuse me. Do you see how Ahab has humbled himself before me? Because he has done this, I will not do what I promised during his lifetime. It will happen to his sons. I will destroy his dynasty. Hey, fool, I told you, fooling with Jezebel, there will always be death of something. There will always, you cannot be around a Jezebel spirit and not experience death. And so now he's saying that, yo, his dynasty is going to be destroyed. But I mean, I would rather it happen to me than to happen to my children. But it's, it's, it's just... We're, we have to understand this. The Jezebel spirit comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Because I talk about this uh, sometimes. So let me just bring this up. Because someone's like, well, how do I label it? I don't care about that. It doesn't matter about the name. At the very end of the day, Jezebel, Delilah, uh, and any of these other ones, Potiphar's wife, it's all the spirit of the devil. So we can, we're just talking about Jezebel today, but it's all the spirit of the devil. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And so we have to be mindful. Do you bring life or do you bring death? I talk about this all the time, ladies. We have to be mindful in our single season. In your single season, you have to cultivate and learn the presence of God for yourself. Anybody who's single, honestly, because if they come and they say that they are a kingdom spouse, they should feel like the holiness of God. They should they should carry in their presence should should be the same thing that the Holy Ghost carries. And the fruit of the spirit, you should feel love, you should feel joy, you should feel peace, you should feel patience, you should feel gentleness, you should feel long-suffering, you should feel self-control, if they are from God. Hey, glory. But if they are not from God, then you're going to feel the opposite. And we have to be mindful. I'm talking to my singles for a minute. You have to be mindful. You have to be mindful and um, go back and catch the teaching, the blessed word of God yesterday, because that was a whole blessing and the Lord really led through um, that teaching. All right. Now, some things I want to talk about as we're, we're recapping about Jezebel. 
Jezebel takes over when leaders don't lead. Hmm. See, we even talked about yesterday, Jezebel is, or Friday, Jezebel is created. A lot of times the Jezebel spirit is happening in homes because the men won't step up. It's not that a woman wants to to, uh, to rule the house, but the men won't step up. Come on. Uh, it's not that the children want to be too grown, but it's because the parents won't step up. Come on. And so we have to be mindful that Jezebel will take over when leaders don't lead. You cannot have a passive leader. Okay, and I thank God for my spiritual father. I bless God for that man of God. I promise when he first came into my life, he said, you just nice, Sister J. <laughs> That's what my nickname was. And so he said, you just nice, Sister J. He said, and we got to get that out of you because where God is taking you, you can't be nice, Sister J, all the time because people will run over you and they'll take advantage. And so a lot of times people say, oh, she be harsh on people. I'm not being harsh, but I cannot let people come and, and distract what's going on because even though we're online, I wouldn't let you come in my church and just stand up and just start going on and on. No, that's not what we were going to do. So even though we're online, I still can't let people just come and talk crazy and hop on live and do all that because it's disrespectful to God. You're not disrespecting me. You're disrespecting God. Okay. Jezebel will take over when people don't stand up for themselves. Hey, glory. When people, um, when people are too passive, and they just keep letting stuff go. Bullies only can be bullies with people who don't know who they are and who aren't firm on the inside. Come on. Because when we have a person who is very passive and, oh, it's okay. I don't want to say nothing. This is why children, pedophiles know which child to touch. Molesters, rapists, they know which child. Why they don't never get the child that's just, honey, I know you got me messed up. <laughs> they don't get that one. They get the little quiet one that's over in the corner that's like, you know, I don't want to say nothing. I don't want to hurt nothing. They don't get the loud child that's just uh, everywhere. They don't get that one because they know that one's going to do this. Blah, 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 blah. Uh-uh, you did touch me. They, they, know, they know which child to get. So we have to be mindful even to build our children up to talk to speak for themselves. We have to build our children up to know that they who they are in Christ. We have to, because if not, we leave them victim to the Jezebel spirit at school, at church, at, at all these different events. We have to let our to help our children to know they have a voice. Mm. Come on. It's so much perversion going on. And we talked about how sexual sin is marked. Jezebel also has that, carries that. So we, we talked about so much. Um, we've talked about so much about how much sexual perversion goes on. And it's just being shh, swept under the rug. Shh, don't tell nobody. That, that what goes on in my house stays in my house is killing people. I promise you that is the worst saying that people came up with. And now I've never heard nobody say what goes in my house stays in my house that wasn't living a, a lifestyle of sin. Yeah. That's what people say they want, that don't want their sin exposed. That don't want nobody to know that you sleeping with somebody you ain't supposed to be sleeping with, you drinking, you smoking. That's what that's where that that's where that came from. Because don't nothing but blessed testimonies come up out of here. So I can't worry. You can tell people everything. I tell my own business. So it doesn't. You can't tell. You're not going to tell nobody what I ain't already said. Because I tell my own business. Come on. We have to be mindful of what we're putting a hush on. On our children. Because we're opening them up and we're leaving them victim. We're, no, when something is not right, you have to tell your kids. We have to talk about this. When something is not right, say something. You're hurting me. Hey, glory. We have to tell people, you, we have gotten to a place where we don't want to say nothing. And if they're older than you, I don't care if they're older than you. I don't care if they, I don't care if they are the Pope. If it's not right, say something. Take the bridle off of your children's mouth. See, and, and there, there is a balance. There is a balance because you have to give them the uh, you have to give them the opportunity that if you're hurting them, they can say something. Yes, it has to be within limits. They have there's a way to say it, but we gotta be mindful to we listen. Sexual sin has crushed so many people. And then you mad, you mad. They grow up and they turn into a thought. They turn into a harlot. They're stripping. They turn into a prostitute. They turn into homosexuals. And, and you're mad. 
They're promiscuous. They have children out of wedlock with all these different daddies. My God, come on. You mad. But it started when they were little, when they were touched behind closed doors and then told, shh. Hmm. My God. We have to understand this. Because people are suffering today. Grown adults are suffering today from the molestation that happened as children. From the molestation that happened as children. And listen, you know, I'm going to tell you, you got to grow through it. You have to move on. You got to know that that thing happened to you, but it's not, it's not going to take you out. It's not going to prosper. But a lot of times we stay stuck, but everybody's not listening to the makeover ministry. Everybody's not listening. So everybody doesn't understand that you don't have to stay in that situation. You don't have to stay in that place. It happened to you, but it does not have to mark who you are. It's a part of your testimony that you are still standing. The word of God says we have to forget those things that are behind us. It's not the reason to stay gay. I was touched as a child and so I'm gay today. That's not the reason to stay gay because now we're letting it prosper. That is when, when that's when the, when the offense that happened, the thing that happened that was sent from the enemy to throw you off course, when it actually throws you off course and you stay off course, now it is prospering. We have to be mindful of that. The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. You don't have to stay promiscuous. I heard someone say that they were raped. And so the reason that they give their body to anybody is because somebody took their body. And so now I give it to who I want to give it to. And I heard you. But you don't have to stay. Because that very mindset will be the mindset that takes you to hell. You don't get to stand. When it's judgment day, you don't get to stand and say, but you know I was raped, Lord. Because he knows. But we have to get past it. We have to move on. We have to heal. We have to go to God. He said, come unto me, all who are heavy laden, and I will give you peace, and I will give you rest. You have to forgive that person because the only person that's hindered, they're not hindered by it. I promise you. When people are so full of the Jezebel spirit, they're wicked. They're hard-hearted. They don't even, they don't even care. And nine times out of ten, they're, they're substance abusers. Hey, glory. So they may not even remember. Come on, they're the ones that's still drinking and smoking. My God, because they're suppressing that thing. They don't live sober. Hey, glory. Some people are not drunk with alcohol or, or, or drugs, but they're drunk with pride. Hey, glory. And so we have to be mindful that you're the only one hindered. They're still going on about their life. They still being rude, disrespectful. Come on, their heart ain't turned. They've been, most of them have been turned over to a reprobate mind. And don't worry, there are consequences coming. You holding a grudge, whew, glory, is not hurting them. I want us to know that. And then the thing about that is that it builds pride in you. That's the thing. It builds pride in you. When you don't forgive, when you don't let it go, it builds pride in you because the offense happens. And now you begin to, you, you're not forgiving that person because you're holding on to it. You're not forgetting those things that are behind you. You're not forgiving them. So now you're holding on to it. And now you're putting walls up to protect yourself. And so now people are coming in your life and God has sent them, but you are not letting those people in. Now you got pride in your heart because now you've become your own protector and that thing is now prospering. We have to understand that. When we become our own protector, when we begin, yes, the word of God says, guard your heart for everything you do flows through it. So you do have to be mindful. So that's why when you realize that things are wrong, you got to get out because many people are staying in relationships so long that their, their heart is so wrecked. That's why the enemy comes for the heart. Come on. He gets those that are closest to you because if your heart is wrecked, everything is upside down. You go through a bad breakup and you don't know how to go through with God. Child, you be over drinking, smoking. You be somewhere crazy, flipped upside down. Come on. Off course. <laughs> Trying to help us on today. Mm. My God. Ooh. 
this thing is real, y'all. I love the makeover ministry because the Lord be blessing us. He be blessing us to understand. So that we don't have to keep walking in shame and condemnation. Some people, you you won't, you won't get free because you're ashamed to tell your testimony. No, it happened to me. People don't want you to tell you, her she goes, she's saying all that stuff about the family. Girl, that stuff is old. No. Now, it's one thing to keep reliving it. Mm. It's one thing to keep reliving it and you're telling it and you haven't healed. But once I'm healed, that thing don't hurt no more. And I'm able to tell you, yes, I got touched as a child by my boy cousins and my girl cousins. And then they told me to be quiet. And then when I got older, then they're going to come saying, why are you gay? Well, you was the first one to have sex with me. Come on. We have to understand that there is a time to tell the testimony. But there is also a time to let it heal and not keep picking the scab. Hmm. And I pray that that's a word for somebody. We have to, I mean, we got to teach that, y'all. We have to. We got, if we're not teaching nothing else to our kids, we have to teach them. Listen, your swimsuit, I tell my kids, the swimsuit parts is what I taught them when they was little. Your swimsuit, what the swimsuit covers, nobody should see it but the doctor and your mama or your daddy. And if your mama or your daddy is hurting those places, then you got to say something. You have to teach them not to be bound by fear. Even if the person say they're going to kill you and leave a mark. I tell mine, leave a mark. If they, if somebody's hurting you, hurt them. Bite them, scratch them, leave a mark. We have to teach our children these things because we are in very evil times. Babysitters are molesting. Teachers are molesting. Parents are molesting nowadays. Family members are molesting. We have to teach them that that is not right. And because when it happens, it, it, it can feel good, depending on what they're doing. It can feel good, so it confuses the mind. Because some parts of me knows it's not right, but it feels good. Mm. Help us, Holy Ghost. And that spirit comes to kill, steal, and destroy. We got men that I tell my, I, one of a person that I counsel. And he's caught up in homosexuality. And I tell him all the time, sir, you are somebody's whole husband, like a wife's husband, not a man's husband. You are somebody's whole husband. But the enemy has really tricked you. And now it's actually prospering. The plan and the plot of hell is prospering when you don't come all the way through. Come all the way through. Don't stop in the middle. You cannot just be a survivor means I'm still living through that thing. You have to be an overcomer. When you are an overcomer, the plot and the plan, it didn't prosper. I'm still who God called me, not who the devil set me up to be. <laughs> Glory, I need somebody to get that. I'm going to be who God called me. Come on, not who the devil set me up to be. Come on, so we have to understand that because some people have become bitter and broken. Debbie Downers, miserable, depressed all the time. Come on, because now you have become who the devil set you up to be and not who God called you to be. For he said he hasn't expected it and he knows the plans for your life and they are good. Not of evil to prosper you, to bring you to an expected end. But a lot of people don't meet their expected end because they get stuck in the middle. <laughs> I got to come on through. God didn't call you to be a harlot. He didn't call you to be a stripper. He didn't call you to be a drug dealer. He didn't call you to be out here dressed naked with your breast exposed and butt exposed. He didn't call you. No, he didn't call you to live and have the appearance of godliness, but deny the power because you can sing, preach, pray, and prophesy all day long and still go to hell. Hey, glory. You can quote Bible scriptures and still go to hell if you do not turn from your wicked ways. Hey. I love God and all his children. If you do not turn from your wicked ways, you will be who the devil set you up to be. <laughs> now that is crazy. Hallelujah. Let's hop back in. So Jezebel will lead what she what is supposed to be leading her. Mm, mm, mm. Jezebel will lead what is supposed to be leading her. Remember, Jezebel is one who wants to be 
uh, wants to influence. Okay. She wants to influence the leader. Once she is in control, she is running everything without actually being in charge. Somebody was on the live last week and they said um, that they was experiencing this with their pastor's wife. Yeah, because they not actually the head, but they in the head's ear. Hey, glory. Come on. This is why you have to pray for your leadership. Keep me, keep me lifted. You have to pray for your leadership because the enemy is always coming for the head because the word of God says that when the head is struck, when the shepherd is struck, the sheep scatter. Okay. So if we can get the head out of alignment, then everything under you falls. Everything under you crumbles. Come on. We talked about that last week. Jezebel, when she came and she began to influence, she began to influence um, Ahab. Things started happening on his watch that would have never happened had he not been under the influence. This is why you got to pray for husbands and pray for wives, pray for teachers, pray for leaders. Anyone in the leader, pray for the principal, pray, come on. You got to pray, come on, because this thing is happening all over. It's happening all over. When the head, when the head is struck, when the shepherd is struck, the sheep scatter. When Jezebel comes, the church be wrecked after she leaves. And it's hard getting it back on track. Oh, I went through this. I went through this last year. I went through this last year. So I know this thing is real. I've been, come on, many people, your kids was in, your kids was good. Your kids was, on, your kids was doing so well in school. And then you got married to a fool. Mm. Mm. Your kids was on track. Everything was good. Come on, work was good. And then you linked up with a fool. God, I bless your name. Everything started slowly unraveling. It's very, very true. The enemy comes to kill, still and destroy. And so I'm going to say this all the time. I'm not the, I'm not the preacher that preaches and, and, and encourages divorce. I'm not that preacher. But I am encouraging that if we're not doing it how God set it up, then we're not doing it at all. It just is what it is. And many people love to make people stay in relationships where they're being broken, where they're being battered. They leave those relationships fried, died, laid to the side. And I'm not talking about a good hairstyle. Come on. Uh, we, we leave these because we've become so under the influence of religion that we're staying in broken places. And now we're raising our children to think that that's how marriage is. No, the word of God says love it like Christ love the church and submit Submit to him as unto the Lord. Listen, Jesus found the woman at the well. He told her, you got five husbands. Come on. So the people that's trying to condemn you, Jesus did not condemn her. He said, you have five husbands, but the one you with, that one ain't it. Hey, glory. See, if it was if, if, if it was so going to the left, Jesus would have said, oh, no, that don't make no sense. Now, you know better than doing that. No. He just said, come on, I have something greater for you. Because your picker is wrong. Your picker is broken. That's what my mama used to say. Your picker is broken. Who you pick and who you've allowed to pick you, you've been duped. Come on. You've fallen in love with wolves in sheep's clothing. They don't love you like Christ loved the church. Cheating is not normal, y'all. I know we've been taught that it is. Abuse is not normal. It's not good that people are, 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 are teaching you to stay in the, that's not, that's not real because the Bible says that mara, marriage mirrors our relationship with God. And I believe in there's a season to give person, a person a time of repentance, but baby, every, listen, you got to read Hosea because Gomer stopped her cheating. She stopped being mistreating to her, to her spouse. And when it's truly someone who wants to be different, they will be. You ain't even got to tell them how to be different. Come on. Because it's in your heart. 
A true repentant heart. You ain't got to tell them, well, stop talking to her and cut that out and stop talking to him and don't do that no more. And you ain't got to tell them that because they're going to do whatever they got to do. That's why he said, husbands, love your wife like Christ loved the church. Because he's like, anything that's getting in the way, hey, glory of my bride, Ooh, glory, anything that's running up against, come on, I'm willing to die for. If it's me or her, it ain't going to be her. And we have to understand that. I seen a man of God on TikTok yesterday. He said a true man of God will never have another woman up in his face. He said he just it just won't happen. It just won't happen. He's not going to be persuaded. He's not going to be under the influence. No, because he understands his good thing is at home. And he's going to do whatever he has to do to secure the bride. Here, glory. So if they're cheating, they never was you. And I understand that we all have been through something. I understand that. And so I do do storm counseling. If you're, if you're in a situation and you're like, you know what? I want to, me and my husband, we've gotten to a situation and we want our, we want to be, we want our marriage salvage. Come on. I would love to come alongside. I believe that God is able, but your heart has to be truly repented. Because a person cannot heal if they're constantly being cut. <laughs> and that ain't how Christ loved the church. A person cannot heal if they're constantly being stabbed, if they're constantly being let down. Help us, Holy Ghost. And see, one who carries a Jezebel spirit has to be confronted head on. You can't sugarcoat it. You can't, you know, well, I just, you know, no, that's not going to get it. This is, these are the facts. That's why I love the word of God. And people that, that have the Jezebel spirit, baby, they get so mad. If you got to go head to head with the word of God, why I, I, a lady had called me one time and she said, why you keep quoting scripture? Because that's how, that's our guidebook. So I have to measure myself against the word of God. And so now I'm measuring you against it to show you that what you saying is not accurate. Come on. It's our guidebook. And so if we're not going to run our life according to this word, then what are we doing? There are only two true spirits in the world, the spirit of God and the spirit of the, en the enemy. But just like the Lord has many names, okay? He's Jehovah Jireh, he's Jehovah Nisi, he's Jehovah Shalom, he's El Shaddai. Come on. Just like the Spirit of the Lord has many names, it's the same way that the enemy, Jezebel, Delilah, come on, all these other, the Antichrist. But at the end of the day, when you boil them greens all the way down, it's still the devil. Okay? So we have to understand the agenda and the assignment. As we're moving forward, we have to understand who is supposed to be in our life and who is not. The word of God says a tree is known by the fruit that it bears. It's known by the fruit that it bears. All right. Ooh. The Lord is so good, y'all. And the Bible says, I will not suffer a witch to live. And so everybody is not going to be scared to stand against Jezebel. Everybody is not going to be scared to speak up and speak for themselves. Come on. That's why you'll have some kids that they're not going to let a bully bully their friends because they're going in. And they, if they're going to get in trouble, we all get in trouble because what you're not going to do is bully my friend. Come on. Even children. See, and it's, it's a very dangerous thing to put your children in this kind of situation because we have children that will get in the middle of a fight with parents. And now a child is now a child is now left to defend you because it's a Jehu spirit in them. Hey, glory, come on. It's a spirit in them that said, you got me messed up. Listen, my son was cutting up one day, y'all, and I, I, had, I was just holding him. I was holding him in a bear hug, and he was just cutting up. My daughter done went in the back and got the taser. She done went in the back and got the mace. She said, now what you, she said, now that's my mama. Now what you not back to, I said, wait a minute. Put the things away, child. Put the things away. <laughs> Listen, everybody don't play. That's what you got to understand. Everybody does not play. 
Everybody don't play with Jezebel spirits. Come on, trying to run, trying to run the leader. Come on, I'm the head. Come on. You have to understand that that thing still has to come subject. It still has to come subject. But Jezebel does have an unrepented heart. So sometimes some people ain't going to be delivered that from Jezebel. Some people just going to, they going to die with that spirit and go right on to hell. And so when you see that a person is not trying to repent, child, I love you and may the love of God, listen, this is my favorite one. May the love of God watch between me and thee while we are absent one from another. Come on. And I pray you get it one day, but I can't let you burn my house down. Okay, I want us to understand because God has so much for his children. He has so much and we're we're staying in broken cycles way too long. We're staying in sin cycles too long. We're staying in abusive relationships too long. And I know some people stay because it's hard to get out. Okay, and I get it. It's hard to get out, but the, it's hard to stay is what I want you to know, though. <laughs> Baby, it's hard to stay. Many people are staying under the influence of Jezebel because you're attracted to the things that they provide, the money, the house, the car. Listen, leave all that. I just know that God will supply all of your needs according to his riches and his glory because he's God. Leave all of that. Come on. You have to know how to, what is more important? We're staying for the wrong reasons. We're staying way too long and we're staying for the wrong reasons. If love is not the reason we're staying, we're staying for the wrong. And I'm not just talking about relationships. I'm talking about your church, just other things. I'm talking about friendships. Come on. Why are we staying in these connections? You have to evaluate your connections in 2021. 2022. You have to evaluate what, why are we connected? What is being produced? Hmm. Amen. Well, the, the first step is that you're leaving. So that's a blessing. That's a blessing. And we definitely pray the strength of the Lord with you. God is so good, y'all. He is so amazing. I love God. And I want to see the beautiful things that he has. And many times he said he will give you beauty for ashes, but you got to be willing to let some things burn. And many times we don't want to let it burn because we like to save face and we don't want to let it burn because whatever reasons. But if it's not good, you have to give God, okay, Lord, this is what I'm laying at your feet. There's a movie called Fireproof uh, and it's a book too and I love it. It's a very good book. Um, it's an awesome book for troubled marriages. I think that everybody should read it if you're going through because he gave God 30 days. He gave God 30 days. He said, God, okay, I'm giving you 30 days and I'm going to give it everything I know and everything I can and everything I can come up with, all my heart, my mind, my soul, my strength. I'm not going to walk by sight. I'm going to walk by faith. I'm going to give God 30 days. Come on. And, and, and the Lord did a thing. But you can't give them 30 years, though. I'm, I'm going to say that's not my recommendation. When the grace has lifted, let me help us, because there is a grace, because the Lord will put people together because he's trying to show them something different. And relationship is a vehicle of salvation. And so that's why he allowed Gomer and Hosea to be together, because he wanted to show Gomer, listen, you don't have to live that kind of way. I'm going to put somebody in your life who is compassionate, who is forgiving, who will keep running after you. Come on. But there comes a time. Hmm. that God is not willing to sacrifice the sanity of his children. The movie is called Fireproof. Uh, he's not willing to sacrifice the, the mental space of his children. He's not willing to sacrifice his children because you don't want to change. No, that's not good. It's not good. It's not good. And so I want us to just evaluate as we're going into 2022 and the Lord has just been teaching us this amazing lesson. I want us to just evaluate where we are, what we're doing and why we're doing it. Okay. And we actually are going to stop right there because the next part we'll finish up tomorrow. We're going to talk about the anointing to kill Jezebel. We'll talk about Jehu tomorrow. We'll pick up right there tomorrow. I pray that the word encouraged you today. I pray that it blessed you. 
let it walk with you throughout your day because I we got into a lot today. We got into a lot of subjects today, and I want you to really let it let it marinate, let it rest on you. Do whatever you need to do according to the message today. Um, we start at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every day right here on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. So I thank you all for joining us on today. If the word has been a blessing to you, make sure you catch it on um, Instagram. I mean, YouTube and uh, make sure you like it, comment, subscribe, make sure you share it. Um, yeah, all that good stuff. Now, also, what I need us to do, amen, what I need us to do is we are gearing up for our leadership training. And so I'm so excited about that, y'all. It's going to be good. And so we're going to, um, we're getting ready to uh, get started with that. So I need you to reach out to me. Some of you I've reached out to, but I need you to reach back out to me because I'm one person. It's one of me and a whole bunch of y'all. So I need you to reach back out to me via email, send me a text message if you got my number. However you can contact me, reach out to me. Uh, my email address is aj at makeover tc standing for transformation church tc um dot org all right so i need you all to if you're if you're interested in the leadership training i need you to reach out to me because it's gonna be good we're gonna do it on monday nights every other monday night we're gonna do a zoom call and i'm excited about that now in order to be a part of the leadership uh training you do have to be a partner with the makeover ministry um, because I give so much free teaching all day long, you do have to partner with bringing your seed, which is twenty five dollars a week. That's five dollars a day. So if you're if you have decided that you love the Makeover Ministry and it's been blessing you, or you have to be a tithing member at Makeover Transformation Church, um, because it's gonna be it's gonna be good. Y'all, I'm excited. It's gonna be interactive, and we'll we're gonna do some some good teaching. But a leader is not a leader uh, without. Them sewing so that ain't a real leader so that's not even if you're if that part offended you then you're just not ready for leadership yet because leaders know that they have to they sew all right cash app is dollar sign makeover ministry m-a-k-e-o-v-a -E ministry um so if you're saying what is partnering with the makeover ministry partnering with the makeover ministry means i've decided that the makeover ministry has been a blessing to me and that i want to come here every monday through friday 7 a.m um and I want to be a part of what y'all got going on. I want to come learn and I want to grow and all of those things. And so we want you to come. We want you to learn. We want you to grow. But we also want you to bring your seed, which is $5 a day. That's $25 a week. Um, we want you to come. And we went, we went up to $5 a week for 2022. And so, because everything costs money to do all this stuff, we got our still standing tour. I'm so excited about that. You want to be, uh, if you would like to participate and come and be a part, we're going to be in Greensboro, North Carolina in January. Well, we're in January, actually two weeks from now. I'm so excited. It's going to be good. We had a blessed time in Grenada, Mississippi. If you would like to invite me to come and bring the still standing tour to where you live, listen, reach out to me. Let's get together. Let's find a place. And let the Lord bless us because we had an amazing time, y'all. I'm looking forward to, to the next one. I'm excited about what God is doing. Um, I do have a book on Amazon, which is called Doll's 90 Day Devotional. It's not just for women. I'm the doll, daughter of the living, loving Savior. It's an awesome book for personal and spiritual development. So make sure you pick that up. And I do do one-on-one -on -one life coaching or spiritual counsel. If you are interested in that, please reach out to me. Now, the other reason why um, you have to sow to be a part of the leadership meeting is because I don't believe in bro being around broke people. And so when they're, because we are the head and not the tail, so it's not just carnal, but it's spiritual. We are the head and not the tail. We are the lender and not the borrower. And I believe that everyone has a gift in them. And God has given me the gift. One of my gifts is to see and help groom gifts that are in other people and motivate uh, gifts that are in other, uh, that are in other people. So you're not going to be a part. It's, this is not the ministry where you just keep sowing, 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 and ain't nothing good happening. If it ain't nothing good happening, it's because you ain't doing your part because faith will without works is dead but um we have to understand that um that we all have we all have a part to play internet calls lighting calls all these things child it costs all right so make sure that you you come in and the other thing that i want to say is if it is your first time sewing 
If this is your first time sewing, please make sure that you put in your email address in the for button or in the where it says uh, for. Please put in your email address um, so that I can reach out to you and contact you. I want to contact you or um, however you get, but make sure you get your email address to me because we don't want you just to sew and listen, but we also want to be interactive. If there's something that we need to contact you for, let you know what's coming up, blah, 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 and on and on and on. But we do want to be able to reach out to you. So, all right, people of God, I love y'all. Um, um, yes, you can be a part. You can be a part of the leadership if you're uh, visiting from another ministry. Thank you for actually asking that question because uh, the Lord told me that we are the body of Christ. So uh, when when it's time to teach leaders, you may be a part of another ministry and that's fine as long as you as long as you're doing what you need to do. And as long as you're able to meet us at five, uh, I mean, I think we're going to do 6 p.m. on every other Monday, you're able to tune in, do what you need to do. You know, it's fine. That is uh, that is perfectly fine. Makeover ministry actually is a blessing because you can have you can be a part of a whole ministry and still meet us Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. and still grow. OK, and so Makeover Transformation Church, that's our actual church. We meet on Sundays at 12 p.m. unless there's a shift in the schedule. And then we normally meet at 6 p.m. But um yeah, so those are kind of like our announcements. So you can definitely be a part of the Makeover Ministry if you are a part of another ministry. Thank you so much for asking that question. All right, people, God, have a good day on purpose. Be encouraged. We'll meet right back here tomorrow at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Remember, if God be for you, he's greater than the world against you. Blessings and peace. I'm Apostle Julia of the Makeover Ministry and Makeover Transformation Church. Have a blessed day on purpose.